Hi, I'm Quinn. And I'm Sylvia. From, from the, the Two, two Meerkats. Cats. So we chose to go to the Batuta Hotel. It was freshly reopened. Let's go the hard road, the shorter road, and we all wanted to see the Batuta Hotel. Off the sealed road and going through the unsealed road to Batuta. Yeah, second phase of the trip was the, the desert and the dirt. So there was a, a phase where we would ride, stop, and let a little bit of pressure out. Yeah, I think it was two or three psi each time. When we got the pressure right, the tire would no longer skip over the stones and it would really grip well the front tire. Felt like it was locked down all of a sudden. Both bikes, the Africa Twin and the KTM, were fitted with the Motors Tractionator GPS tires on the rear to give long life. And uh, the front tires were Golden Tire GT723 Nobbies. Very good tire in the dirt and sand. The pressures, generally pressures on the dirt, we found best to run 22 psi. Yes, yeah, so our rule is the gully, the sort of depression part, and then the ridge is the stones that are piled up by the car tracks. They run out. Um, you can be in a rill and think, oh, it's great, and suddenly that rill just merges into a big pile of rocks. But uh, after a while, you get a, a little method on how to get over it. You know, you gas it up a bit and go at an angle, and over you go. Two to pub. Wind blowing its ass off. Oh, that's a little Oh, yeah, that's nice. Uh, yeah, you were still two to pub working in need with the two to advocate. It's going to be something. Yep. Sure. Ah, <laughs> you should get a huge oh, it's on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Right, right, Robo Mayor. It's a nice country. I thought it would just get more and more deserty and because we went to that giver play and shit, and then yeah. suddenly it was grassy and hilly again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. it was similar like all the way to Burbank. Pretty hilly and grassy and all that. Oh, was it? Yeah, because the road goes up on the hill. The old road used to go along the river. Half the time you can't get along there because of the flood. You know, when the floods are up, it'll be four or five months a year that you can't get along there. Uh, floods? Is that from when a cyclone comes through, you mean? Yeah, oh, well, it's well, regular, regular wet season. season. Every wet season they get a flood. Every like, wet season? Pretty well, yeah. yeah what? Pretty well. You should build a bloody dam here and have water all the time. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, you try and do that. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, yeah, there'd be political forces oh. stopping that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The stories flowed thick and fast, and uh, the volume of the conversation of the locals went up and up and up. Mix it up a bit. Mix it up a bit. They went over and he said, I went over and I said to the wife, he said, I'm going to fucking follow Burke and Will's fucking foot tracks all the way to the yeah, gulf. Yeah, that's yeah. all he fucking did. Yeah, yeah, yeah and he talked about it. He got there today. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, well, what's his last name? Last name Stoney. Stoney, Peter Stoney. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm. Young so. fellow on the side or do their, do their thing. <laughs> yes. And they come. And they they say they love that. 60 or 70 k's instead of 120. Yeah. Well, but they were very friendly. Yeah, they quickly caught us up on all the local <laughs> politics and talking Cricket. points, in and around the races. Today is the fifth day of riding, and we're going to go from Batuta through to Birdsville, just before Birdsville, the campsite, all on unsealed road. Well, we met the postie as well, who does what, a 700 kilometer route every day. So, uh, what about road trains? What do you think of the end? Ah, yes. I've been dreading the road trains. <laughs> really quite nervous about the whole thing. But we found that so long as you pulled over, because you could see them coming from miles of the dust, just pull over, they would zoom past, and you know, you just wait for the dust to settle and off you go again. They weren't actually a big deal at all. No, they weren't. We had good crosswinds, like uh, 30 knots, so 50 kilometer an hour. 
strong enough to just blow the, the dust away. And the road trains don't move off the centre of the road, so they sort of just keep their well, position. They have right of way. There's signs right that say they've got right of way, so you, you do have to watch out. Oh, no. Stony jibber planes on the New Birdsville trailer tire. The mobiles on the phone, and we use this quad lock system. But both of us found our quad locks had come undone from all the constant in the washboards. Yeah. yeah, so that was something we learned. Okay, tire change finished on the trailer, and we refueled up the bikes from the jerry can so I can make it a Birdsville. Fuel. Um, this is the one leg where we weren't going to make it, even with our long-range tanks. So we arranged for our uh, uh, vehicles to, to well, we waited for them actually, and they eventually turned up and gave us our 20 liters, which we split between us, 10 liters each. I um, found that uh, riding the Africa Twin on this road. Um, really made me appreciate that bike a lot more. I'd uh, ridden my KTM 1190 before, so when I got onto the Africa Twin and the weight was really low, the COG really low on it, right, you know, I was riding in sports mode, traction off, gravel on, it was just so easy to control. I suppose it was also to do with the way we packed the panniers. We put all the weight low in the panniers, low in the panniers and on, near the front of the bike. It just made... The front of the panniers, yeah. Yeah, it just made everything controllable. I mean, I really did try to keep all the weight low. I don't, didn't even put a top box onto the bike because of that. It's an excellent Outback bike. Oh, it, is. it was perfect. CRF 1000D, just a great desert bike. Yeah, there's a big windmill on the Diamantina River near our camp. Always laughing at me for how I say I'm in. Hilarious. Hi, eating time. I think so. You just like it more because I paid. I think that's past the chip. Yeah, so we just packed up the day camp and we're going to head off to Big Red. Short ride today from Birdsville right out to Big Red, which is the biggest sand dune in the Simpson Desert. And the Simpson Desert is partially on private property, where Big Red is, and par partially in National Park. Okay, we just arrived at Big Red. It's winter, it's September. And um, nice cool breeze, 22 degrees. We're on the, uh, on the Queensland side, looking towards uh, the Territory side, so we're facing west. And you can see that the um, left-hand track is closed, and the right-hand track is open. Girls are putting up the patrols awning, and I'm um, going to get the husky off the back and give that a bit of a ride around. On my first run, you get up the top and you start heading north along this section. You can see here now, and I went off the end because I realized there were some big drops if you actually ran north along the dune once you got up. Doug, it's steep down there. And you can see that gap between the dune and there where I flew the last bit. Wasn't expecting a big drop like that. Should really have walked here first. So, that was pretty funny. What I found really interesting when you got to the top of Big Red, when you looked out the desert, it wasn't what I expected. I expected it to be undulating dunes thereafter, but it wasn't. There was huge gaps and then, you know, for kilometres, and then you'd see another dune in the distance. Yeah, it's like dune and then a big clay pan and then a dune.
Big June teaches four-wheel drivers two things, tyre pressure and momentum. My tips to Porsche were 18 PSI in the patrol and don't take your foot off the throttle or you'll be bogged and have to reverse all the way down again for a second attempt. But man, did she hold the throttle down. Way more than I thought. It was great to watch. And the, the standing up is uh, also just refreshing and cool. You stand up, you get some, a decent amount of evaporation. Yeah, it was cooling. It meant you could see further and you could get the, the blood you know, sort of moving in your legs again. Birdsville Hotel. Well, we had to go there, didn't we? We had to go there and have a meal. I mean, it's an iconic place. You hear about it, you just have to go. I thought it was very touristy. Yeah, and all the overpriced. staff were backpackers. There were no locals. It was just wall-to-wall -wall Irish yeah. people and whatnot, <laughs> foreigners, serving in the hotel. And it was um, a tourist trap. Um, we had that sort of two choices, fast meal ticket system. Yeah, just for a steak dinner. Felt like you were in a canteen. $25 steak dinner each. But uh, hey, we had to eat in the Birdsville Hotel, so we did once. The next night we camped at the Darmentina and enjoyed a camp meal. It was far better. I do have to say though, Birdsville and the bakery, oh yes, the donuts there are spectacular. All the good in the So the the thing I found surprising about Big Red is, okay, it's sand and you know it's going to be red and there's lots of it. The sand is a is a, not a beach sand. It's it's a desert rock erosion sand and it's very very slippery and uh, you put your foot down when you stop your bike and you put your foot down, you're probably going to fall over on your bike. Yeah. I think the first time I stopped at the top of the dune, I just fell over because I put my foot down and it, it just went into the sand. It's like sort of a quicksand almost. Well, my first time up Big Red was walking because I wanted to have a look what it was like. And for every step you took, two thirds of that step slipped down the hill. Mm. It was quite a lot of hard work to actually walk up the hill. It's a fabulous sand. It sort of cleaned the tyres. We got there with sort of dirty brown tyres and after a few hours of buzzing around on the dune, the tyres were a beautiful black colour. It's like abrasive or something. Yeah. There were three open tracks on the day from the west and one from the east. The second eastern one had been closed. My technique uh, on the 300 two-stroke and on the 1200 was uh, like 55, 60 kilometers an hour, and both bikes just sailed up there. No issues. Yeah. I don't have any issues. Um, Stopping was an issue. The top. <laughs> <laughs> you really had to be sure where you put your foot down. KTM 90 on Big Red is just a dream bike. It sounds great, and as long as you give it plenty of throttle, I loved it. I thought it was great. But for the Big June, the tire pressures were different. Uh, the front was set to 16 psi, 1.1 bar, and the rear tire was set to 12 psi, 0.8 bar, and that gave uh, a nice long elongated tread pattern. Okay, we're going to be putting the sticker onto the big red signpost. Mini cats. And I'm going to say that's a pretty good spot.
that made for pretty interesting riding because the four wheel drivers when we got there were churning up the dune. They would go 20 meters, get bogged, churn it up, back down. And it wasn't just the four wheel drives, it was the motorbikes too. I mean, we saw some really interesting riding styles there, feet flapping all over the place, bikes falling over. Yeah, there were a couple of KLRs and DRs struggling. One of them got up, a couple others didn't. Out on the western side of Big Red, you'll find a small signboard that said Birdsville to the right, Big Red straight. Um, three or four runs up Big Red there on the western side. And we got the, the Meerkat sticker. It's supposed to be on Channel 10 on your trip, we were told, and we could see it on the signs. But we found that vehicles were just appearing at the top without making calls. So our handheld UHFs, we'd, we'd hear nothing and then next thing there'd be a, a car coming the other way. But you'd see the flag, it was okay. No issues. If they had one. We were just buzzing. I mean, this experience was fabulous. Better than we'd ever imagined. Um, I don't know that, that that probably won't come across on film. No, I mean, it, this was my first lengthy off-tie experience and it was way more enjoyable than I ever thought it could be. I'd been very nervous about the whole thing, but that was just being silly, I realised. It was great. Yay! Uh, good mouth. Good job. And how'd you feel about your uh, your big attempt? You mean attempt? It was successful. My big success. Your getting maiden. to the top. This, My... is, this is your first run, and yep, first run, and off I went. We all way to the top. There was cheering. There was a moment of silence where we listened to the motor, and then there was cheering. I got to the top, and I have to say, I was quite emotional. I'd always said I wanted to get there before, well, let's say uh, a significant birthday came up, and I made it. You did, and you did it on the first attempt. There were some uh, <laughs> incidents where people fell over, but it was always just when stopped. Yeah. It's very difficult to keep a bike vertical on those dunes when you stop the top. Yeah, when you stop right on the ridge, yeah, your feet aren't always as where you think they are. The sand just gives away. It does. One minute you're standing and mixing with the sand sliding away under your feet, so you look like a drunk, but it's normal. <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. You get yourself up? Hold on, I'll help you up. <laughs> Get that on video. Yeah. In fact, we all it sounds a bit of braggadry, but we all actually made it on our first attempt. So all the vehicles and the police were there. We saw the police both days. We went there. The police uh, were very active on the June. They were, which was good to see. Yeah, sure. Yeah, fair enough. There's um, just way, way fewer people out west than there are on the other coast. Like a fraction, like two percent of the number of people. And seeing other people is rare, generally. So from our camp on the Diamantina, it was 45 kilometers each way to Big Red. So we had to carry at least 1,900 k's worth of fuel just to go up to Big Red, plus whatever fuel we used out there, fizzing around. Some beautiful fresh water could be had uh, next to the Diamantina River campsite, which is a free campsite. There's fresh yeah. water there to die for. It gets pumped out of the aquifer, and wow. Yeah, it's between the um, racetrack and Birdsville Town proper. Yep. And um, yeah, there were great campsites and the, the, the water just on top. Just amazing.
The pelican uh, next to our camp was fascinating. He had a, a set routine of herding fish and catching them at the riverbank. He was more successful than I was with a rod. <laughs> I needed bait <laughs> and I only had lures. <laughs> yeah, what a trip. But all in all, really successful and enjoyable. Yeah, absolutely loved it. Just loved, loved, loved the desert. Great place. Yeah, can't wait to go back.